Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to load an Excel file to a Qtable widget in PyQt6. Alright, so here I have an Excel spreadsheet that looks like this. In this Excel file, I have, let's see, we have data from count A to count I. And let me show you the uh, application demo we'll be building in this exercise. Alright, so here in this PyQt application, we have a Qtable widget and a push button. Now if I click on the push button, load data, it's going to load this Excel spreadsheet data from the sales table to the Q table widget. And here we have the formatting as well. So if we want to manually format the number with two decimal points or zero decimal points, I'll show you how to do that as well. All right, so let's get started. So first, create a new Python script. And I name my script demo.py. Here I'm going to insert my code snippet. And let me activate my virtual environment for uh, PyQt6. All right, so here let's import the libraries. Here I'm going to import Qtable widget, Qtable widget item, and Qheader view uh, class. And to manipulate the uh, data set or to import the uh, data set from the Excel file, I'll be using pandas library. And if you don't have pandas library installed, you can install the library using uh, pip install pandas. I'm going to delete this line here and increase the font size. All right, so let's go into the uh, my app class. So here I already created my layout object. I need to create my uh, widgets. So here I'll create my table. And I'll add the uh, table to my layout object. Next, I'm going to create my push button. And I'll name the object as self.button is equals to Q push button. And for the uh, caption, I'll write load data. I'll send shortcut key to letter L. And I'll add the uh, push button to my layout object. Let me take a look. Oh, so here I forgot to input the Q push button class. All right, so here uh, everything looks pretty good. Now let's specify the uh, Excel information. So here, let's do this. I'm going to create a method called low Excel data. And this method takes two parameters, the Excel directory and the worksheet name. And from the pandas library, I'll name the output uh, df is equals to pd.reexcel. I'll provide the Excel file path and the machine name where the uh, data is contained. And here I'm going to insert if condition. So if df.size is equals to zero, then I'm going to exile the function. And here uh, inside the uh, main routine, All right? So here I'll create uh, two variables. One is Excel file path. And this will be the uh, file location of the Excel file. And my Excel file is going to be data.xlsx. And what's your name? So let's call this uh, what's your name? It equals to sales. Now let's go back to our uh, low Excel data method. If we look at the Excel file, so here uh, we have several uh, empty cells. All right, so we need to, uh, first of all, handle those empty columns because when you use uh, pandas library to import empty cells, pandas module is going to recognize those values as uh, NAN value. So here we can use the fill NA method to replace all the null values with empty string. And I want to replace the uh, diaphragm object. And once we clean out the data set, 
So here we can uh, set the row counts, column counts, and the headers, labels, those type of things. All right. So here we can uh, set the row count by referencing the data frame object that shape. I want to grab the uh, rows count. And it's going to be uh, set column count. And it's going to be diff dot shape uh, one. Next, I'm going to insert my uh, column headers. So from self dot table dot set horizontal header labels. And here we can reference the columns by uh, inserting diff dot columns. All right, so here uh, let's take a look. So I'm going to assign this method to the uh, push button. So self dot button. I'll send the method to the click signal dot connect. And because this method, this uh, low Excel data method has two uh, parameters. Here I'm going to insert a Lombarda function. And the first parameter is going to be, it's going to coming from the uh, click signal. So it's going to be uh, two. And the second parameter is going to be uh, the Excel directory. Cell so code is an uh, Excel path and she name. So this is going to equals to what she name. And Excel path is going to equals to Excel file path. Now inside uh, the low Excel data method, I'll insert the arguments Excel path and she name. Now let me test out the uh, function. So I'm going to click on load data and it's going to simply uh, populate the columns and insert the uh, uh, row headers, uh, row labels. All right now let's insert the uh, cells or values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a loop. I'm going to uh, iterate each row one by one. And there are several approaches that uh, you can use to uh, import the uh, data set to a Qtable widget. In this video, I'm going to show you the simplest method. At least in my opinion, this is probably the easiest method. The more advanced approach is creating a data model and we'll send the data model to the Qtable widget. But this method is, uh, in my opinion, is much simpler. So I'm going to uh, iterate each row. So here from the data frame object, I can use the uh, iterate rows method. So this uh, iterate rows method is going to return the row index and the row values in a tuple. So here let me show you what it looks like. So if I click on row data, so here's the output of uh, row object. Here we have the row index and the row value. And we can reference the value uh, by the uh, column name or by the uh, column position. And because this is actually a pandas array object, not a, a regular tuple. Actually, I should uh, change the terminology. So returns pandas array object. I think this is more accurate. All right, so here let me grab the uh, values from the pandas array object. Next, I'm going to uh, array each value. So here, actually, let me do this. I'll insert the enumerate function. And I'll insert the values uh, object. And this function is going to return the index and the value. So we have two set of uh, values, count, uh, count index and value. And enumerate followed by the values object. If we look at the uh, numbers, so here the numbers are format as regular string. And I want to uh, format the number a little bit differently. I want to insert the thousands uh, delimiter. All right, so I'm going to do is I'm going to insert an if condition. If instance is instance. I want to insert the value that I want to check against, against uh, these two uh, data types. So flow and int. If the value is uh, either a flow or int, then I want to uh, format the number. With zero decimal point, as well as insert the uh, comma delimiter. Oops. Yeah. 
the format and we insert the value. All right, so once we uh, format the value, we can create a queue table which I an object. And I'll insert the value variable. I just want to make sure that the value is in a string. So here I'll insert the string function again. And I'll save the output's uh, table item. Now I can add the uh, uh, table item to my queue table widget. So that's set item. And here uh, inside the set item method, we can insert a value by giving the row and column uh, position. The row position is going to be coming from the uh, first element from the row object. And the column position is going to be coming from column index. And table item is the value. Right, I think that's pretty much it. Now if I uh, launch the application and load data, and here's my uh, Excel spreadsheet data set in the Q table widget. And here notice that uh, some of the columns are a little bit uh, too narrow. And I'll show you how to set the uh, column size for column C. So this one has, uh, I think, yeah, has the longest uh, text string. So here going back to the uh, low Excel data method. So after we are inserting all the uh, values, I can reference the table widget that set column width. And this method takes two parameters. So the first parameter is the column index that I want to adjust the uh, column width. And it's going to be the third column. I want to set the column width to 300. Now let me import the data set again. And here's my uh, complete data set. All right, so this is everything I want to share in this tutorial. And I just want to say that you can adapt this um, approach or method uh, using Pandas library to import other different data sets as well, such as CSV file, text file, or uh, records from different database systems, such as Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, or MongoDB. All right, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video.